What's up, everybody? This is episode three zero, episode thirty of the Pitside Podcast. Hard to believe it's been that long. Yeah, got a great episode for you today. We've got uh, in honor of uh, first responders night. We had back on Wednesday. We brought Gary Taylor on, so we're going to talk to him a little bit. Very interesting guy. Very much enjoyed hearing about his service. Uh, so we'll we'll talk to him and uh, cover off some things here with Roger and I in just a minute. Let's get started. Welcome to the Pit Side Podcast, where we discuss the latest news and developments in the G-Force Racing League, as well as other racing news inside and out of iRacing. Now here's your hosts, the a Outlaw, Preston Cranmer, and Roger the Bassman Craig. Yeah, so we're back, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna jump over and talk to Gary here in a few minutes. But uh, we're we're gonna run this one a lot like we ran last week. So Roger and I'll chat for a few minutes, and then we'll yeah. s- spend most of our time over with Gary. It's been a been a pretty wild week, huh? <laughs> it's been yeah, it's been a while. It's been you know it's 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 gone like low highlights, low lights. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's uh, the the, uh, the hometown heroes thing. They'll just, you know, we maxed out on 305s, maxed out. So, and we'll run a poll on this because here's the situation. We've got, we, we set everything up for usually 45 cars. And that gives, what that does is gives you five heats, four transfer, and at least it, if, if everybody shows up at a max, you've got to prepare for the max. And then we get a CMB main, we're all, but only four transfer out of that. So out of 45, only 24 make the show, like, you know, just a little more than half. So uh, I'm willing to up it. Like the popularity is crazy. Like I was thinking maybe up at the 50. Because obviously there's probably people that tried to get in and couldn't. So, but I feel bad because half half the session is going home. You know, they're not making the feature. But um, so so we'll do we'll we'll do do a poll. See what everybody says. You know, I I don't know because it's just uh, this thing is just going crazy, man. Even the four tens. I mean, we're getting. Really good numbers with the four tens. We're getting, you know, I think there was, um, well, there was seven uh, in the B main, but there should have been eleven or twelve if you guys had disconnected already. So, um, you know, like we're we're, we're uh, and I think the one week we did have a C main in the uh, the four tens. So it's mm-hmm. it's just crazy. It's just crazy. And this week we got the uh, the jumpy trucks coming in, so that should be that should be fun. And uh, and the legends back. So uh, you know we've got the. Uh, the paint contest and hopefully more guys will jump on that so uh you know um i'll talk more about that i'll do an- another tuesday special where i just come on and promote the the, the wednesday night let everybody know uh, what's coming on and and hopefully we can get a little bit more um traction um with with that uh, with that project but the, but the legend the legends are a riot to drive and i think they look so cool on the track yeah, well, so and for people that weren't uh, weren't around maybe for the first week or aren't familiar with it, walk through the the paint challenge. So Jeff Barker won week one, right? I yes, don't remember yes. that correctly. So how uh, how does that how does that work for the next three weeks okay. or three yes. sessions we'll have for Legends? Yeah, for, so so yeah, the the uh, Legends uh, it's like a mini tour. You know, they tour around the country. They and they show up uh, um, at our track four times, and uh, so it's a, a mini series with a, their own little point system. But uh, the the other part of that is that uh, you know pick the paint, and uh, they're all we're promoting uh, everybody to do a throwback paint. So Barker won the first night. Uh, people will vote um, this Wednesday night for their you know the most popular paint, uh, and they'll win a ten dollar i racing credit. And then um, uh, the the week three will have a winner, and then um, at for championship night the legends are in town for championship night. Uh, we'll take those three and we'll have a a vote off. So, you know, this is a case where everybody will be getting their family and friends to, uh, you know, swamp the ballot box. You know, it's just like uh, the local town, uh, you know, the award for the best restaurant, the Chinese food restaurant or whatever. And you get everybody to, to write in. So anyways, that's the plan. And uh, there was something coming from Epsilon's for the uh, for the winner of that, correct? Yeah, that's t-shirt. yeah. We're gonna we're gonna do a custom T-shirt. Uh, so you'll get a, um, uh, and I haven't designed it yet. So it'll but it'll be some branded with our league and and Legends Paint Champion or something. And you'll I'll actually put your car on the uh, on the on the shirt. So you'll get a custom shirt with your your name and number and everything on. It should be pretty cool. So, oh, so another 
So Go I, ahead. yeah, I wanted I wanted to ask, cause, and I'm putting you on the spot because I don't think we've actually decided this yet. But for the fourth and final week, when it's the you know the three winners against each other, can they swap their paint? Like I'm assuming if guys are confident in the paint they have, but could they yeah. bring another paint week? You know, in that fourth week to try to like up the guy that won the first time or whatever. Well, it could be, and you know we've got I mean uh, we got VMRs uh, uh, sponsoring us now, and uh, um, you know they the, they may want to just uh, just to promote their. Uh, their, their rap business uh, come up with another rap if they if they can get a car in I mean you know everybody but uh, you know Spartans behind that so you know uh, they, they they support their uh, broadcast pretty good so um, but yeah it, that's that's a great yeah it's open to uh, new paint so that that could make it uh, challenging for all the rappers that, that might get in um, so uh, anyways uh, yeah so another one we're working on here and then you and I've discussed this briefly and I've been uh, thinking about it more and more. So, ladies' night, um, you know, we're coming up with different ideas every every week, and uh, we don't have a name for it yet. Uh, not officially. Not officially. Not officially. Um, we don't want to offend anybody because powder puff derby was a you know a standard term, but I don't know. Don't want any to offend anybody with that term. But I mean, I grew up with that term. Yep. And it was it was great. So, uh, but whatever, ladies' night because it's it's, a, it's the week of Mother's Day. Uh, it was and it, it, it kind of started with. Um, uh, Jackie um, uh, Chalmers. So Jackie Chalmers raced with us uh, in the um, uh, Skippy series, and she's from Scotland. Uh, so she's, I don't know what time she stays up till to race with the Skippies, but she was, and she really, really did well. She's just a great lady, and uh, so she has. She saw on the schedule that we were going to do this, so she has expressed interest in it. But I think she thought it was just a women's race only, and, and I was just kind of like it was ladies' night. But that's what's got started. I thought, well, we should have a race. So here's what I'm proposing, uh, Preston, is that we, uh, all the drivers, we would have a special session that night. It would just be like a, you know, a 20 or 30 minute uh, warm up, which would be happening, you know, during the previous race or something like that. And then it'd just be a qualify, qualify feature on the broadcast, maybe a 20 lap feature. But we would use 305s, but we'll set the power at, and I, and I got to figure this out, but set the power at like 50 to 75%. So that they can, you know, because let's uh, anybody that just jumps on a car, it, you know, even yes. a three hundred five is hard to handle. Let's clarify that by doing that, Roger is not saying that women can't drive. Not at, no, no, not at all. It's it's that do we know that most of the most of the ladies that would be in this race don't have the experience, and we just want to make it easy. Yeah, if we had a thing for guys who have never raced before, we it, it would be the same idea. Right. We'd be setting at fifty seventy five percent because. Uh, even 305s when you first get in, I'm like, <laughs> you know, you're all over the track. Right. So uh, we would we would set a nice, uh, you know, uh, a zero state track, um, and 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 just pick, dial the power down just so they're controllable. Right. So um, the the only uh, thing I would say as far as that sounds great, I think we should run with that, but I don't know that we can do the the practice session during a previous session. Because a lot of the a lot of the ladies that would be racing with us, their significant other is probably racing in, in that previous oh, session. Yeah. So we need okay, we so. need to allot a few minutes for them to practice. So so what I'm thinking about this is all like they, you know this is, on this show you hear it all. We what, we before. we do our planning here yeah. sometimes. Yeah. So um, uh, what I was going to do is take one of our you know we got a whole bunch of spare leagues here so I'll take one of the leagues and uh, name it some sort of a ladies league, um, and then all the guys can uh, apply to join to that. I'm saying guys because it's the guys account. But then what we would do is um, we would assign a number or um, or their their significant other's number. But the name, you know, the nickname, which shows up on the broadcast, shows up in, in all of the racing, uh, would be we would substitute the lady's name in there. So during the race, you would see the lady's names, not who owns the account's names. And um, so, but the big, you know, you... Uh, you'd have to get Penny Lee out and uh, get her oh, yeah. uh, pra practicing. So I think that's the key. You know, we're talking 50 to 75% power. We could go 100 if everybody practiced. So, um, and that's that, that's like a TBD, like, uh, to be determined. Like, maybe it's 90%. Like, we'll figure that out. But that, that was that was my idea anyways, out of the box. That I think the 305s would be the easiest to drive. And... Um, uh, I think it'll be a great race. It's just kind of like on seniors night, the retreads are going to have a feature. So it's, um, you know, let's, let's, we, we've been, we've talked all the time, you and I about trying to get more women involved. And, uh, 
So uh, this would be uh, an ideal scenario for that. And I think it'd be a lot of fun. And, um, you know, it would be uh, a chance for the girls to show what they got there, you know, and, uh, and put on a good show. Yeah. And and it'd, be the, it'd be the highlight of the night for sure. For sure. So what do you remember what week that is? It's That's it's later week. later in the season. I know that. Well, it's not that long though. I was like, like it, you know, Mother's Day I think is May sixth or something like that. I don't know. So it, it'd be the week before Mother's Day. So it's maybe only three weeks away. I got to look at the yeah. schedule. Maybe about week eight. It seems like seven or eight. Yeah. So. Uh, um, yeah, and and I'd be interested if if guys are willing, you know, uh, to to in the go in the lounge after it's all said and done and tell us how many people got in fights because they were offering unsolicited advice. Because no doubt, da- no doubt that number won't be zero. So we want to hear about that too. Uh, oh, can you imagine all the guys standing behind the the sim seat just yelling instructions and that, you know it's too bad we couldn't get a, uh, some live camera footage of some of the yes uh, activity. that that would be great. Also, I say, are you are you volunteering? Are you going to have have a, yeah, a I'll camera do, on Penny, Penny Lee and you? I'll I'll do that. I don't I don't know how I'll set it up on the broadcast, but I can definitely I can get a camera working at least, and we'll figure that out. Um, even if we post it later or something, we can we can do that. Um, so here's a, let's also have the winner on the podcast that night. I, absolutely, that's a great idea. Yeah. Hey, and I, but I got to ask you too while we're on this. So so you think uh, Big Mike could get mummed out? In ooh, the ooh. Now that we should film him asking. <laughs> like that, I don't know if it'll get that far, but I'll have to get the camera out and at least see see what happens when uh, when he yeah. proposes that because I don't think that's going to go well. No, no, <laughs> I I can tell you from this household that it ain't going to happen. So. <laughs> yeah, well that that's fun. That's that's. Uh, but you know, but hey, I, I might be able to get one of my granddaughters to do it. They, they, there you know, go. Couple, yeah. So. Uh, it's it, it, so all that out there to everybody, like anybody. It, it, it doesn't have to be. It could be. Uh, you know, uh, but there should be a, like a minimum age. We don't want like eight year olds and ten year olds on. But, uh, but, so, so, so that brings up another thing. We should have a kids' night. Too. Like next kids' night, we'll have a kids' race. Okay, well, there's, there's then there's Lane in there. So <laughs> yeah, I um, you know, relatively speaking, Eli's not that far from Lane's age, but I don't think Eli would uh, would do too well. So we'll have to skip. <laughs> so we might want to set a minimum age limit even for that. I don't know. Yeah. Anyways, we're we're kind of getting way off. Well, here, so but, for ladies' but, night, are we going to start with uh, four wide salute? <laughs> <laughs> we can't even do that with adults. So, but, you know, <laughs> well, ladies are well, adults, Roger. Well, they are, but <laughs> and they're they're much more organized. Maybe they would pull it off. Maybe. You know what? <laughs> Maybe we should try that just to see if. Uh, I'm gonna veto yeah. that one. I don't. I nothing okay. against the ladies. More, more. Uh, no, no. More against it's, us at this point than, oh, yeah. uh, than the yeah. ladies. <laughs> yeah. So it was. Uh, yeah, that's. A, yeah, ladies, we're not laughing at you. We're laughing at the guys. Well, we had a big snafu the other night, and it, it's, it's on. Um, it, it was like I think you call it perfect storm. Um, a lot of it, I, I jump. I'm, I went in to watch because I didn't want to take a spot away because I knew like it might be 45 guys in there, but then I couldn't get on to race control. So I could, I couldn't yet give the instructions. Although I watched the replay and my voice did come up a couple of times, but it was getting mic'd over by everybody else so much that no, it never happened. So there's a few things. Um, one is the instructions. So, uh, and this has happened a couple of times. They have to be like one step at a time. So, and you and I haven't discussed this, but because um, in a way I'm calling you out and I'm not doing that intentionally. But what I found from experience, because it happened the last time too with whoever did it, you can't give more than one instruction at a time. Because so you're saying, okay, the the uh, the, the front six rows go to the outside, and then the back move in. Well, as soon as those guys start parting, the guys in the back are already, you know, some some are trying. They're not. So it's it's kind of got to be a step by step where okay. You know, everybody get going the same speed. Then, okay, now the t- top six move out, back row, maintain same speed, maintain your position. And then once they're there and they're, you know, they've gone like a quarter lap or whatever, they're stable, then you move the inside up. But right. these guys are trying. So that was that. And then, and then it was everybody's mic it over each other. And then we had the fiasco. That was a mistake. We should have left it under green. Uh, the, the, the guy that ran, I have to admit, the guy that ran this best was Cody Olson, and that's where I learned that technique of doing that was from Cody. Um, 
but uh, yeah, it, and it turned into a, just uh, a jungle. Well, <laughs> and and the only one we've ever done under caution was the one Kevin Fry did, and and that one. And that one went great too. I was yeah. super smooth. But what you're saying is right. That and that's what he did. He gave one instruction instruction at a time. Now, yeah. we were yeah. we were at the di disadvantage because Roger's trying to relay it through me, and <laughs> I'm watching because I'm in the car. And just it just so happened to work out wrong that I was going to be at the very back, right? So I can only <laughs> see you know I just see a mess of cars. So I'm trying to get people organized. I wish you guys could have heard Roger and I yelling at each other. Because if you thought things were bad, we were screaming at each other. I'm yelling, we need a yellow, we need a yellow. Like, it was just a mess. And then, I, I honestly, I, I don't know that there weren't some things going on with iRacing. Because like, it definitely seemed like there were a handful of guys that either didn't have their iRacing chat on or, or something. Um, well, which I don't think is the case, because most guys hear the driver's meeting. So that no. was weird. But, but the other thing that happened was uh, one driver, we're not going to name him. Um, it said, go around the pace car. And so rather than listening to us, which in this case, normally we say listen to iRacing, but in this case, you know, you follow the instructions. So he went around. So now he put everybody a lap down. That's what caused the problem. Got it. So, you know, so, um, and, and that's not on him. Like, you know, it's it, it just, it, 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 it was a, the perfect storm. It was too, too many different yeah. issues going on at once. Yeah. It, it, it's, you know, it, it's like a. A dance routine, and it's you know it's a lot of moving parts, and and uh, yeah, and 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 the other thing, in fairness to some of the guys, you know, we've usually done this in Renegades, so it's the more experienced drivers, they, and, and most of them have done it multiple times now, so they're they're in on it. Where this, you know, there's some uh, newer drivers or not less experienced drivers, ne never done one of these before, and I think there's another issue, Preston, and it brought it came up in a discussion is I think just a few people they don't have iRacing chat on. Yeah, they weren't hearing it, so that's a big. That's a that's that's a huge issue, right across the board. So we need to address that. Um, the other thing I want to just address briefly, at least, is uh, you know, uh, we came out the next day and said um, that uh, chat's going to be uh, muted for all the racing, and of course that was just a shitstorm. Uh, and I think a lot of people thought it was a result of that. It had nothing to do with the 410 race. It had everything to do with, you know, things have escalated lately with, uh, you know, we pride ourselves, uh, you know, and I got called out. I got called out for, you know, name calling in that thread, but I was really just name calling the one, never mind, I was name calling the 1% I, that doesn't justify it. So, you know, that was, that was a justified criticism of me. I should not have done that. Um, but uh, it, we pride ourselves in not, you know, that it's a friendly place to be. And it's gotten worse. And, and I think, you know, the profanity-laced uh, call-outs, um, we've had some real um, degrading comments. And uh, what's happened is one of our sponsors, um, who is has zero tolerance for you know, any bullying of any type, uh, got bullied in a session. And uh, shame on the person that did that. Um but but they're not alone. Like there's too many people doing it, and and it's kind of like uh, it was pointed out uh, by that sponsor that you never know who you're talking to. You never know what they're going through. You never know what kind of day they're having. And we've got a lot of guys in this league that you know suffer from PTSD, and uh, you know like none of this helps their lives at all. So um, our first the, the first thing we can do about this is just do this uh, race wide mute. Uh, we're looking for other solutions. One of them may be that, okay, we put it back on, but you, you do a call out, you're gone. I mean, gone. Um, or at least that session, you don't get muted, you get booted. And, you know, second, second offense, uh, we don't have room for that. We don't tolerate it. Um, and uh, anyway, so enough on that, I guess. It's just, yeah. uh, it's a sad situation, really. It is, and and I, I want to add to it just a little bit, um, and, and it does it stinks because the kind of the result of, or what we're doing at the moment does, in a way, punish everybody. Unfortunately, sometimes when when things get to the volume that we've been dealing with, that's just the way it has to be. This isn't really intended to be a punishment, you know. Truthfully, the iRace and chat being open was more important back when we had first started when we did do black clears and wave rounds and all those things. Without those things, it's not really necessary. I know I know other leagues out the gate um, 
don't you know they mute mute chat while racing's going on and and you know it maybe undo it at certain points or whatever um but it's it's really not a huge change there's not a lot of chatter um you know i think uh some somebody brought up you know whether you you have to call out how are you going to call out going in and out of the pits now and and that's a good that's kind of a good yep. catch because it wasn't something we had really considered yep but if you've been in a session with us you would know i mean and and you know it's it's really like two or three guys that are doing that anyway because we most guys know each other right it's it's they they understand where they're at on the track and that kind of stuff so again this this isn't really intended to be a, a punishment we're just trying to get a hit of ahead of an issue that we're having um and it has some you know there are some negatives about it but we just have to kind of do what's best we got to get this under control and then it has gotten worse and and i would encourage everybody to consider the fact that we intend to be competitive but we also want to get out and have fun and if you're getting to the point where every week you're getting so frustrated that you know you're coming across the radio because you're mad at somebody, I, I'm not judging you because I have a temper as much as anybody. But you know, consider that your mindset might not be in exactly in the right place because I mean you're not having fun at that point. Um, so it's it's again it's not intended to be a punishment, even though for some guys it kind of feels like it. So it just kind of leave it there. Um, you know, we're we're open to ideas too. This isn't a shut off. This is it, and you know, this is how it's going to be. But for now, this is how it has to be, and we'll you know reevaluate in a few weeks and say see, see where we're at. Yeah, and 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 it, and it does cause issues like uh, like with the Skippy race. Communication is a big part of that race. So um, you know, I we need to try to deal with that. But and somebody said, what about the matinees? Well, we had a a real abusive call out in the matinees. You know, like, come on, like, geez, what's going on? And then uh, Saturday morning, like the, the, the race that's actually going on right now as we're talking, um, the, there's a lot of communication in there. But again, that's where that's where the sponsor left because he got abusively, uh, you know, called out. And um, there, there's zero, there's, there's, you know what, it can, believe me, scream in Discord, Preston will tell you, you know, it's a what, what? What was the? It's the a tapestry of vulgarity or profanity <laughs> yeah. comes out my mouth. But it, you know, I isolate it to the room. I don't go and do it on the on the chat. Right. I just ruin right. it. I just ruin it for all the other guys in my room. I don't ruin it for everybody on the in the race. So, um, anyways, enough about that. But we're you know what? It pisses me off more than it probably anybody to have to do this i i absolutely hate doing it if anybody thinks i'm getting joy out of this you know it's uh no just simply no so we're trying to come up with a solution that works but really if you want to blame anybody blame all these guys that are doing all the call outs and they should be ashamed of themselves every one of them should be ashamed of themselves so that's enough yeah, so we're, we're going to jump over to talk to Gary here in just a second, but I did kind of have another announcement, and Roger and I have talked about this a little bit. So I'm, I, we're kind of teasing something a little bit here, and I can't give you any details, but we've got something really big for our league in the, on the horizon. Um, in the next, I don't know, five to six weeks, you'll start seeing more information about that. Um, but it's going to require a lot of work, specifically from Roger and I. Not even the executive committee doesn't know about this yet. It's it's got to stay under wraps, right? So, um, so that for now that'll that'll be how it has to be. But because of the amount of work that we've got to put into it, Roger and I are going to start um, moving the podcast to every other week, which so everybody knows was our plan as we rolled into summer anyway, because of the nice weather and you know we don't want to be locked into. Uh, you know, doing podcasts on Saturday mornings and Wednesday nights and everything. So, um, just just getting started a little early, and we're going to spend the other Wednesday nights working on our um, working on our our plans. I guess I need to leave it at that. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so so just wanted to give everybody heads up. You won't see us, and I, I'll make a post on our Facebook page as well. Um, but I, I didn't want anybody to think we had just kind of quit next week when when nothing happens. No, no, um, no. So. We're we're. Pre- we're pretty excited about uh, you know what's coming down the pipe here. Yeah, so, and and in special circumstances, you might see us where we have one you know in a week where we're scheduled off, or it might get you know moved around a little bit. Um, but for the most part, you'll be seeing one every other week. And and you know, like I'm I just just thinking about like ladies' night if uh, that's scheduled to be an off week, we'll probably want to switch that around. But you know, yeah, uh, yeah. Other than that, yeah, um, and we, there, there's a lot of and there's a lot of people we want to get on that are like really interested in people. I, that's the one thing I think I, I'm hoping everybody else finds is 
uh, fascinating people that we have on, you know, uh, veterans that we've had on, uh, first responders we had on, like Bob the Good, who's, a, you know, Mr., uh, what'd you call Mr.? Um, Mr. Motorsport. Mr. Motorsport. Uh, so, and we've got a few other guys lined up already, uh, so it's, we'll try to get as many in as we can, but uh, there's, there's, there's a ton of work going on in the background right now with uh, um, our, our development. So, uh, anyways, uh, yeah, with that, we, we've got a great interview here with uh, uh, the guy. Oh, and let's talk about First Responders Night. That was, uh, it, you know, Wednesday night is just by far the most popular night we got going. Like, everything else is going well. But this thing just took off like like a rocket, and um, first responders night was very very cool. Um, I liked how we, you know, I, it was your idea. I think to uh, each heat would be uh, uh, in tribute to a different uh, first responder. And Tom Gom, you know, like holy smokes, his whole bloody family, like that was just like, stunning, you know. And uh, kudos to that that whole family, yeah, uh, for what they do. Um, but we the other thing too is we have veterans night. And we want to do the same thing for veterans. We want to, you know, I, I knew, I, I'm sure this were, I know there were more first responders and people are shy, but uh, veterans, I want the veterans, uh, you know, we, we want to honor you. We want to pay tribute to what you've done. We appreciate everything you've done, whether you're Canadian, or American, I, I don't care. Like, I appreciate what, what everybody has done, uh, you know, for democracy or whatever you want to call it. I don't care. Like, it's just, I appreciate the sacrifice those people make in their lives for our benefit. We wouldn't be here talking about what we're talking about right now if it wasn't for those guys. 100%. And uh, we want to we want to pay tribute. So it's not don't be shy. Um, it, it's something to be certainly super super proud about. So uh, we want to do the same thing for veterans. So I'll be putting something out shortly about, you know, just at least give us your name and what you did and just a little brief write up. But what uh, what we'd really like is those little videos that we can run in the intermission. So just a just a little brief, you know, I'm so-and-so, I was in whatever service for whatever years, uh, and that's it. It's, it's very simple, but, uh, you know, there's a name and a face now that you can put to, this guy gave up part of his life for all of us, and uh, so uh, we want to do that. And speaking of people that have given up part of their life for all of us, uh, you know, we got Gary uh, lined up here, and uh, uh, I know Gary personally, of course, and um, great human being, and, and there's, you know, all these guys out there just, and then young guys like Aiden, you know, that are coming mm -hmm. up. I mean, it's not, you know, it's just, uh, can't, can't say enough about all of that. And that was Aiden's idea way back in September. Um, kudos to him. And I, it wasn't about like, give me, give me focus. It was like, let's pay tribute to all these first responders. And, uh, and, you know, we didn't have any nurses or any, uh, anything like that, but you know, they're, they're on those, uh, you know, yeah battle lines right now and doing a doing an unbelievable job and just uh, want to thank everybody but yeah that, so we got a great interview uh coming up and we should roll on with that uh yeah and, and we'll be talking to you in another week or so but uh yeah and we'll we'll work out this uh, whole uh mute thing and uh you know we'll we will survive and uh come out stronger on the other side for sure absolutely yeah let's jump over and talk to gary thanks everybody for watching we'll be back uh in probably two weeks with episode 31 but uh, just make sure if you if you haven't, so there is a Pitside Podcast Facebook page um, where where we post the videos originally and then they get shared out. I recommend going and um, and and following that page. I don't post anything except for the podcast, and then also I'll post updates as as it relates to schedules and um, hopefully. So we've had a lot of people that wanted to come on, so we've been kind of working them in at the last minute, but my plan is to, now that we're doing it every other week, have it scheduled a little further out, so we'll let you know who's going to be on as well, um, and that that comes back to, if you want to be on the podcast, please let us know, I've thoroughly enjoyed getting to know some of the guys that, um, you, you don't have to have some elaborate backstory or anything, everybody in our league is eligible, we want to talk to you guys, we want to get to know you, some of you more quiet guys especially, um, so Send Roger or I a message. You can message the Pitside Podcast. We'll work in at some point. Um, so, again, let's go talk to Gary. We're, we've talked too much as it is, and uh, we appreciate you watching. Take care, everybody. And we're here uh, with one of my favorite drivers, uh, always uh, kind of racing together at the back, I guess you could say. 
uh, one of the uh, popular retreads. The G-Man, Gary Taylor. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing guy. good, guys. How are you? Doing uh, doing good. Doing good. Uh, we just had a another unbelievable night um, with uh, Hometown Heroes. Uh, no, like we had... We had 40. I went in uh, to watch mode, which we'll get into in a bit because that screwed up another session. But I didn't go in to register because I didn't want to take a spot. All 45 spots were gone. So, like, we have to have a discussion now. And Joe was saying, like, you could add more. And I'm saying, well, you know, you're going to be working even later. Um, but we had 45 cars. The problem is now, you know, like, like the C main, we had 14 cars and 10 were going home. And then in the B main, we had 14 cars and 10 of those. Like 20 guys had to go home, and I, I hate that. So, you know, I, I, but I'm thinking there's probably guys tried to get in, couldn't get in tonight because we were at our max. So I'm not sure what we do. It's a good problem to have, man. It's a great yeah. problem to have. But the, how, how'd you make out tonight? In the not well, Northwest? not well. Not you well. were one of the uh, on the trailer. I was, I was one of the the uh, 10 in the C main that went. Uh, uh, what happened was uh, John Rayner was uh, P2, uh, Bob DeGood was P3, I was P5. Uh, uh, no, John was P3, Bob was P2, I was P3, or P4. So we're going around. Hold on. I got to get a pen. Give me a second. Okay. Oh, my God. Just get a pen there. Okay, so you're all near the front. Okay. We're all near the front, right? So we started off, and I think it was into the second lap. Dog honored if um, John got ahead of Bob, but they got three in a row, eh, going out of the corner. The bottom guy come up and tapped John. John tapped the guy into the wall. Bob got around them all. And I'm coming full steam right into John, who went sideways. So yeah. I was out. I got yeah. back in, but right near the end. So. Yeah. But it was fun. I had fun. So uh, you know, I love the 305s. Yeah, I know you do. Because I can't oh. race anything else. So no, I know you've been doing great. So uh, if people haven't noticed, I know it's kind of uh, we're. I guess we're right now. I'm thinking. I'm looking at you. No, you're not looking at me. Yeah, I am. Gary, Gary and I. Roger, yeah, are you okay? No, no. So Gary, Gary and I live two doors apart. Okay, so there's a, a unit in between us, but we're both in the the same front kind of uh, study den, whatever bedroom, whatever you want to call it. And I'm just yeah. trying to figure out which way. He, but his unit is a mirror of mine because you know it's every other unit's flipped. So that, like this is important shit. Everybody needs to know. No, we're the same. But, well, we're but, we're going to have other, your other neighbor on next week. Yeah, so we're uh, no, we don't want to go there. So, uh, <laughs> so no, we don't. So, so Gary's Gary's layout is exactly like mine. So yeah. I'm fa I'm facing Gary's house, but Gary, even though he's facing me here, is actually no, I'm not. I'm facing the west. I'm facing the same way as you are. No, I'm face. I'm facing There's west. My You're door right west. here. This is riveting uh, television. I know. <laughs> <laughs> So anyways, this is, this is, he's just is, peed off because I got a two-car garage and he's only got a single. Oh, uh, you you got to start that. Now yeah, I, I am pissed, I'm pissed off. I got to yeah. tell you that, yeah, there, I could have my boat if I had a two-car garage. I could have it in there or whatever. I wouldn't have to be jockeying cars. So you've got totally, old guys got all sorts of time in the world there, Preston. You know, we don't have to get up in the morning either, so we can just keep talking all night. But, um. Uh, <laughs> But anyways, so uh, so G Man is my neighbor, and that's how it all started. Uh, he had me in model trains, and uh, for those that haven't seen it, I'll, I'll maybe post it on the lounge. It's a great video. Yeah, good of, idea. Uh, he had an awesome layout uh, until he took it down. Uh, but he, the only good thing about him taking it down, because uh, he had me all involved in the railroad, and then just sort of one day told me uh, I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> but uh, he took it all down and bought a rig. That's why he got sick of trains. He wanted to race. So Gary started his career in my basement, uh, sitting over my right-hand shoulder, uh, and he was uh, doing the admin stuff for the races, and uh, it was great. Uh, when did when did that start, Gary? I uh, what well, you started the league in uh, June. That was Australian Outlaws, right? Yeah. And you started that in June, so likely uh, into July you found I think it was a little tough for you to be trying to drive and. Uh, clear flags back when we were clearing uh, 
clearing flags, uh, familiar, black flags, and, and let's not go there. Wave arounds and uh, the guys wouldn't haul their numbers out, and you're trying to squint up at your little iPad up in the corner there or something. And uh, yeah, but anyways, yeah, that's how I got started. So yep. then he got me behind the wheel. Uh, worst thing he ever did. And uh, Gary and I used to some races. Gary and I used to run midgets at uh, when they first came out with uh, the chili bowl, and it was like it was a challenge for either one of us to get around the track once. But we would try to. One guy would go until he got a quick time, and then the other guy would get in the seat, and he would try to beat the other time. And it's, it was usually you get a quick time, you just floored it, and the car it didn't matter where it ended up. You just wanted to get it across the line, and then it could go into the bleachers, whatever. But yeah, exactly. it was. Uh, we had a lot of laughs doing that. So the next thing you know, Gary's uh, taking down his train set, and um, it was very elaborate, awesome. Uh, well, I, I remember those days back when he was adminning, and we had it was probably around the same time that we started the Coast to Coast Racing Team. I don't even think we officially had a name then. But I remember we used to give you a hard time about whether Gary actually existed or not, because we never heard him. And, <laughs> and right. obviously all the commands are coming from Roger. And so we were all kind of wondering, like, does Roger have this imaginary friend? <laughs> and then, of course then, I'm... then if I remember correctly... Roger got up to go get some ice cream one night, and we heard Gary talking in the background to Roger. And that's when we all kind of calmed down, and we knew Roger was at least mostly yeah. mentally stable. So I, I had the full yeah. headset, but uh, my headset actually has a plug-in for another headset. So Gary could hear, but he couldn't talk, yeah. Right, and yeah, it was, that's right. And it was actually uh, that mysterious uh, man called Joe, Joe Backus, who uh, gave Gary the G-Man name. Sasquatch. Manager, yep, Sasquatch. <laughs> That's well. That's Joe, not Gary. Yeah, right. So uh, yeah, so he's uh, finally. Oh yeah. Gene, Sa Sasquatch has got way more hair than Gary. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'm growing it on the sides, by the way. This is uh, back back to back weeks. We should have. If we would have been on the ball, we should have had him wearing a hat like uh, Bob Dimbuck wore <laughs> yeah. last week. I, I thought so, of that when I saw yeah. Bob's. I thought that was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. <laughs> he had me fooled. So I, I was thinking, what could I do to do uh, to compete with that? But uh, I, I finally, I used to shave her totally bald, but I decided around Christmas time I'm going to let her grow. So there's not much on the top, so I'm growing the sides. Uh, hopefully I won't look like Bozo the Clown. <laughs> well, That's hey, with, with, the, with the lockdown coming down now, you might have... Uh... You might be one of those guys with no hair on his head, but hair down to his uh, shirt or whatever, you know, from the, on the yeah. back and all that. Or any tail at the back and, or something. And, and uh, I'm going to get in big trouble for this, but you know, your 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 wife's from uh, the East Coast. Uh, yes. And I I love they're salt of the earth. They're my favorite people in the whole wide world. But a lot of those guys I've seen, they'll take that hair back here and they'll grow it long, and then they'll the the. <laughs> They'll comb it all over the bald spot and bring it around. Slip it, it's, it's, slip it it's over. It's something to yeah. see. I've seen that. You won't anyways, see me do that. No. So, uh, anyways, so uh, <laughs> so G-Man has uh, been in the league for, well, quite a while now. and I've uh, been just over a year with my own rig, yeah. Yeah. And getting been with better, you prior better. to that. I, I have a hell of a time catching them now. It's, it's getting good. And he's older than me. It really, like, ticks me off. But the other thing too is we just we just come off the track. Uh, I'm going to get away from that subject. Um, we just got off the track tonight uh, with hometown heroes, and uh, um, it was a tribute to uh, all the first responders. And uh, that's one big reason we've been wanting to get you on for a while. But tonight's the most appropriate one. I I thought things went really well. Um, I don't know if you've seen any of the broadcasts, Gare. But, yeah, I watched. Uh, I watched it all. Even on my walk, I was watching it. And when I come home, I uh, I had it on. Yeah. Oh, that's I cool. Did, the only one I didn't really watch was our own. So. Yeah. So you know, I I thought it went really well, and I I was really pleased. A lot of the guys in their interviews were thanking the first responders, and I know Tom Gom was uh, you know um, not overwhelmed, but I mean he, he it really meant a lot to him what we were doing, and uh, I guess what you guys don't understand is. Uh, you know how much it means to us what you guys are doing. I think that came out tonight with uh, every even uh, Lane. You know was uh, conscious enough to uh, um, you know thank all the first responders for everything they do and and, uh, and helping out. So um, it was a great night. But that, tell us a little bit about your career because it was a yeah okay. Um, actually, I started in uh, 1967 as a volunteer in a department. Uh, 
above Dundas. Roger knows where that is. Uh, I'll get you a little geography lesson in a bit. But anyways, uh, I started as a volunteer. It was a department that my dad was a co-founder of in 1944. Uh, he was on there for 37 years before he packed it in as a volunteer. And, you know, volunteers, you got to give them a lot of credit because those guys uh, have a regular job. They get up in the middle of the night and they'll go out and help anybody that needs to be helped. So I always have a big shout out for volunteers. So anyways, in 70, I started a career with the town of Dundas, which was uh, populated at about 20,000 at the time. We had a uh, composite department, which is... Uh, uh, career guys and volunteers. So I worked with volunteers for the most part of my life. And uh, yeah, we uh, I enjoyed it. You do your training. It's a four-year deal up here in Canada. I'm not sure exactly how they do it in the U.S., but up here in Canada, it's four years. You go through the classes, probationary to fourth class, and then uh, you're on your way. Uh, 1987, I was promoted to captain. And uh, I remained as a captain until I retired in 2005. Uh, as far as firefighting goes, we did everything in the small community I was in. Uh, we had an aerial truck, a 100-foot aerial truck. They called them quints because they have pumps on them, as well as uh, our pumper truck. Uh, we had tankers because we did have a small rural area, so we needed tankers. We had a rescue vehicle, a backup pump, and... Uh, Everything uh, runs smooth. Uh, in 19, I don't know, about 1977, 78, for some reason, our glorious government of Canada decided to change us from imperial to metric. And of course, uh, we were all in, in imperial in the fire service, which I'm talking more about our hose pressures, PSI versus KPA, which is metric. So. I got deemed as being captain metric and had to teach all the guys the new system, which was fun. Which was I hope fun. you got bonus money for that. Oh, man, that was tough. That was a tough job. And the, the funny thing about it, a regular hose line, you run 100 feet. You run it at about 100 PSI, maybe 150 PSI. You get into KPA, and it's like 700, right? So they're seeing 100 pounds versus 700 pounds. They think the friggin' hose line's going to burst on them, right? So it's just little things like that. Um, also, I looked after all our breathing apparatus. I took courses, and uh, I repaired them as much as I could. It wasn't everything. Sometimes they'd have to be sent in. I looked after our air bottles. Air bottles have to be uh, tested every five years, so you would go through a cycle of having them tested so many each year. Uh, what else did I do? Uh, other than fight fires, uh, we did a lot of medical calls. I have uh, two great moments in my life as far as uh, uh, medical calls. One was uh, delivering a baby which was a real highlight for me. And the young kid that uh, was born that day would be about 37 years old today. The other one was uh, Christmas Eve. We had a fellow VSA, and uh, my partner and I at the time brought him back uh, prior to EMS uh, responding to the scene. And uh, this fellow lived for another 10 years. Unfortunately, he did have some upper brain damage. And, but he became a painter, and he was selling paintings, and he was doing fantastic. So that that was a highlight for me to bring him back Christmas Eve for his family. Yeah. Other than that, firefighting is uh, it's a dangerous job, but I loved it, and I would do it all over again if I could. Uh, uh, it just was a fantastic d a job. There wasn't a day went by that I didn't say to my wife that I didn't want to go to work. I was always ready to go. So and then in uh, 2001, we were under a two-tiered system, as Roger knows, because he lived in the west, uh, east end of Hamilton's area, Stony Creek, and I lived in the west end, which was the Dundas area. But there was uh, five communities. Uh, we were under a two-tier system, and uh, our 
beautiful Ontario government decide to uh, change this into a one-tier system. And so, of course, the Hamilton Fire Department, the big city, took us all over, and uh, I worked for them for my last five years. Uh, I stayed in my own station in Dundas for three of the five, no, two of the five. Then I went to a water down station, which was an outlying station. It was a steady day job. I wanted to get off nights, so I applied to do the day job, and I, I picked that station up. And I also worked with volunteers up there. They had volunteers in that station. Uh, the city guys did not like volunteers as much as many of their own guys were already volunteering in these outlying departments, but soon had to uh, had to uh, resign from it because they didn't want them double dipping. And I was also president of our local for 20 years uh, in Dundas, a local 1719. Uh, so I had a lot of dealings with... Uh, our town council, uh, as far as negotiating and so on and so forth. So that's about it with my career. I retired in 2005 and, uh, yeah, it's, Moved um, to Brantford. You, uh, you mentioned, um, you know, your dad, um, was also yes. a fireman and, uh, uh, Tom Gom, who, uh, didn't have time to put, put together a video, but he reached out uh, when I was asking for uh, people who were, uh, you know, um, first responders and I was like just blown away like uh his um his grandfather his father him his two brothers all his uh, uh his, his mother um I actually all, heard all, that interview Roger, all his yes. uncles uh yeah. it, absolutely amazing and, and I can relate to that too as well as like the whole family thing like uh it was my stepfather but uh I can remember. So he was a volunteer for 32 years. Um, his father uh, started the Stony Creek Fire Department, and um, and his his mother, my grandmother, uh, was the dispatcher. Like she never left her home for like 10 years in case a call would come in. Like she yeah. she hadn't even been to the Stony Creek Dairy. Like in the same town, she had never. She just stuck around the house in case it was a call. And uh, they had over 100 years between them. But I can remember you talk about those going to a call and sacrifice. We had a, just a bell in the house at the time. I mean, this is, you know, going back in the 60s and that. But yeah. uh, the fire hall was sort of a block away, and it was through an orchard at the time. It became a parking lot. But it was an orchard at the time. And I can remember in the middle of winter, that alarm would go off, and my dad would go in his socks, like in his socks, through the snow, through the orchard, to get to the fire hall, like he didn't have time to put shoes. He just gone. I mean, it was just total dedication, and um, yeah, it was. Uh, I, I remember uh, the week before he was going to marry my mom. I, I was maybe ten years old, and uh, um, he was at a fire and was overcome with fumes. And he 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 spent the week in my mother's bed. You know, she was and uh, uh, she was like she was nursing him. They didn't know if he'd be well enough to uh, um, get married. You know, like he was really overcome by, by smoke and all that. Smoke, so, yeah. Um, you know, it's uh, it, it's it's amazing what people do. I think it, it really came to light during nine eleven. You know, um, and when 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 people said, um, you know, when everybody's running away, these people are running in. You know, they're running yeah. into danger instead of away from danger, and that really hit home with me. And um, and just the sheer yeah, numbers. That, that Go ahead. That hits that hit that hits home with me. I think of that every year. Three hundred and forty-two firefighters in it's, one day. I moment. worked in a city of Hamilton with only five hundred firefighters. So put it in perspective what they lost. You know, and, I know they yeah. have about three thousand firefighters, but uh, you know, three hundred and forty-two guys is a lot of guys in one day. And that, you know, yeah. they were dragging all that equipment up. Mm -hmm. 50 stories or more like it's just that's that's crazy you know anyways uh, just um it was uh aiden young had the idea back uh, last season and we never really got it pulled together and i'm so glad we did and that won't be the last time we do it um because you know we we certainly highlighted firemen uh, but you know we don't want to forget about the police the police have been abused so bad and yeah there's yeah. there's definitely bad cops there's bad cops but boy yeah. There's a lot of good cops, and they, like they're taking a beating, and uh, you know they're they're putting their neck on the line every night. They don't know if they're coming home, and uh, 
or our, or our uh, you know the EMTs and all these people just putting needles in arms. I mean, you know, they're and and God, the 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 people in um, intensive care units that are just you know they're just getting decimated and worn out, and uh, you know it's um, I, I know people are upset. We just went through going through a lockdown, but. You know, I mean, in Ontario, our, our uh, intensive care units are almost full. They're sending people hundreds of miles away. Just heard the other day of a family of three. Um, they went to three separate hospitals, and they all died alone. That's know? right. I heard that too, so, Roger. Uh, yeah. So it's, uh, you know, but but just can't thank all those first responders enough. And, and I know there's some EMT people in our league, and I know there's some there were some, some cops in our league. Um, that did, didn't step up at this point, but hopefully we can get their names and uh, their their stories for next time because, um, you know, we are a community and we're really proud of the people that are in it and thankful for a lot of the people that are in it. So, um, yeah, can't, can't say one thing they about do that. here in Ontario now, too, is they recognize PDSDA for all uh, first responders, that's EMS, police, and fire. Uh, they are recognizing that as, as an illness and, uh, you know, you, you, as much as I don't think we see, we, well, we would never see what the military sees, but we see a lot of bad stuff. I can tell you stories. I wouldn't tonight, but, you know, we could sit down and chat. I could tell you stories that I, uh, I wouldn't want the public to hear, but uh, the odd time I'll let the odd one out, but uh, it's there, you know? Yeah. And, uh, so, yeah, I, I give a big shout out to everybody like uh, EMS is a little different here in Canada, I think, than in the U.S. Uh, we do have them in our stations now, but they are a separate identity. Uh, they are run in by the cities now. They used to be run by the province, but they're run by the cities. They're housed in the fire stations for the most part. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you know, it's uh, everybody works together. That's the big thing. We we run with the EMS a lot. And going back to that uh, child delivery that I had, uh, uh, they were a little ticked off that we had this kid already born and, and uh, <laughs> ready for them to take when they arrived on scene. It was uh, quite interesting. Yeah. Was it a, was it a boy or a girl? It was a boy. Yeah. They, a they didn't boy. name it Gary. Did they? they didn't hmm? name it Gary, did they? No, they didn't name him. <laughs> bunch, bunch of ingrates. I met him a couple times uh, over his life, and he, as I said, he'd be about 37 now, and uh, I wasn't much older than that myself at the time. I was likely around 40 or 41 when 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 he was born. Yeah, so that's yeah. that's wild, man. Yeah. So let's get back to the track because you know it, okay. we're, it's an iRacing racing podcast, so we don't want to be uh, getting too morbid here and uh, everything else, but. Uh, for sure, before we leave that subject, just I want to thank you, Gare, uh, you know, for Absolutely. your service and, yeah. um, and, and all Appreciate the guys it. in the league, you know, whether we announce them tonight or whether they're just laying low, but uh, yeah. we really do appreciate that. Well, and I'm going to tell a story on myself here real quick. So I was trying during the, during the 410 race to, for each heat to name the guy that we had designated for that heat. And luckily I was in the fourth heat, and that was the one for Stephen Waugh, so I'm glad I'm getting to say that now. That was an honor, <laughs> Stephen Wall. I think only the drivers heard me, but I did because of, I guess, just my hockey brain called him Patrick Wall to everybody. <laughs> so I'm correcting that now. It was an honor of Stephen Wall. I tried to do it then, but I was chuckling so hard I couldn't get it really out. So anyway. Uh, Joe, Joe couldn't figure that out for life. And you know what? When you think about it, when you look at the name Roy, like, how do you get Wa out of that? Yeah. We, in Canada, we do. Well, especially, and you would, Patrick Wa. Right. That was really when, you know, that the, that was, I think, when I got educated on on, on Wa. But, um, no, it's... Uh, yeah, I think your only hope is if you ever watch the Avalanche play. If if not, then you're going to get it wrong, and that's that's all there is to it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, so t tell us about uh, your career in... Uh, in I racing, you, you know, you've um, well, you as, you, as you already kind of stated, I uh, I got seconded by Roger, who is my neighbor, and uh, uh, yeah, I used to sit behind him. I had a set of earphones on, I couldn't talk, but I could hear everything. And uh, he'd say, Okay, uh, you do the wave rounds, and 
the biggest problem we had was trying to get the guys to call their numbers out because uh, it was hard for me to see the little screen and and uh, hit my iPad at the same time. And uh, so, yeah, uh, yeah that was back, wave when, and black that was back when we did wave arounds and uh, yeah. uh, clear black flags. And uh, we, we ran into just a, an awful mess tonight in the 410s. And uh, it was funny when you bringing all this stuff up, sort of uh, it, it, it's appropriate to bring it up tonight because it was a, a yeah. gong show it was a gong show um we won't get into details or names but uh you know it was very it was frustrating and i'll take a bit part of a hit for it because i did not want to go in directly to the uh as a, a, a competitor because it would take a spot so i went in watch and this is the second time that i've gone in watch and supposedly there's a way to do it but i could not get on uh race control so nobody could hear me. So now, poor Preston's in the race. I'm in Discord, relaying you know what should be happening, and then We're yelling and then, at each other. <laughs> oh, and then and then everybody starts. You know, it got screwed up. Uh, I don't want to go into why or whatever, but uh, you know we've we've run some very successful four wides and renegades multiple times. Uh, so all I'm saying is, some guys know how to run these things, but a few guys screwed it up. And then nobody would, nobody would shut up. So you were trying to get guys to to clear their stuff, but you're saying key up. But then somebody somebody would key up and have something to say, and uh, so you didn't, you know. And and I'm working from a distance. I, I'm not catching on. Preston's trying to drive. He ended up not driving. You know, we need more admins, folks. We need more admins. I'll be advertising for it, please. Because you do not want to admin and race. It, it ruined Preston's race. I mean, he won't say it, but I will. Because uh, I looked, and he was seven laps down. So um, he got out to, to help manage it. But um, and, and people wouldn't. They were, key, we were saying key up so we could do wave, get these wave rounds, get everybody straightened up from this mess. And and others wouldn't shut up. They kept blabbing on a thing. And um, I should shut up now because I don't want to be negative on this. But it was it was very frustrating. And just highlights the fact that how important uh, at live admins are, and um, that they shouldn't be racing or trying to race. I mean, that's been one of my Preston knows that's one of my biggest frustrations um, is trying to race, and, and it just ruins your night, it just ruins it. So we do need more volunteers, um, especially on Wednesday nights. I uh, really appreciate what everybody does from an admin side. And uh, we got a great thing going on Wednesday nights. We don't want to screw it up. And, yeah, it, you know, it got screwed up tonight, but uh, we kind of survived. And, you know, we'll, we'll have mistakes along the way, um, and we'll learn from those. So, uh, anyways. Yeah, I, I but agree that, with you, Roger. I was, watching, uh, I was watching that with the 410s, and I was shocked at the number of cautions they had tonight. Well, no, so what we were doing, we kept throwing yellow flags because we couldn't get the guys lined up right because they wouldn't stop keying oh, up. We couldn't okay. figure out who needs a wave round. Key up, and then somebody key up and say something. Anyway, I, I don't want to talk about it anymore because I was okay. very frustrated by it. And I <laughs> Way to go, Gary. Kind of <laughs> saying, yeah, Gary well, I like to get him in a rant time. once in a while. It's not about Especially this. when we're traveling up north, fishing, going fishing. They always like like to work Roger into a good rant, so it just passes some time. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> right, <Yeah>. buddy. <laughs> we need we'll to get, have you we'll on every week, Gary. <laughs> we'll get in the vehicle, and uh, I'll realize I'm in Belleville, and I haven't stopped talking. That's like three hours, you know, because he got me all worked up on some crap thing. That's why you never hear me talk much. I'm a pretty quiet guy for the most yeah, part. Because you're because you're shit the server. Because you're used yeah. to hanging out with Roger, and you're used to not being able to get a word in. That's right. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Just let him rant, and he'll get up. He'll get up to the wherever we're staying when we're fishing, and he gets into the rants, and I just listen. Ah, <laughs> uh, you're a good Not guy, me. Roger. Not me. We've had a I'm lot quiet. of fun together, buddy. Yes, we have. So st staying with the racetrack thing, I'm I, oh, yeah. I'm okay. going to ask you my question that I ask everybody: Who would you, in our league? Who would you say is your biggest rival on the track? My rival, likely John Rayner. You know, John and I are always at the back. When I raced with Roger, which isn't that often other than middays, we're a good rival. 
we, we like to chase each other around, but he's usually ahead of me. But uh, I think for the most part, because I do most of my races with John Rayner, him and I are pretty close in, in, in most of the vehicles. I get out of the skippies. He's pretty good at skippies. I, I was I was a disaster, so I'm just taking a rest from it. Not to say I won't come back sometime, but uh, yeah. Other than that, and uh, Bob DeGood you had on last week, uh, uh, he kind of runs in the pack with us. Uh, he did pretty good there in the 305s tonight. He got a, a second, I think, in the B main, or no, the C main, and then uh, I, I heard him say I'm done. Um, that was, uh, I think you and I were talking then, Roger. He said, I'm done. I guess he got whacked in the B main, so we put him out. And, yeah. And it was good to yeah. see your dad out tonight, too. I haven't talked to Mike for a long time. He was running 305s tonight with us. Oh, did he? I, yeah, I didn't come in yeah. until the 410s, and he didn't stick around for that, yeah. so I didn't run into him either. No. Actually, he did pretty good. He, uh, he, he was up in his heat. He, he moved on. He didn't have to run the, the mains. He was ready to the feature, so. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I like running NASCAR. I'm not that good. I'm getting a little better. I like the bigger tracks, of course. I, uh, the trucks, uh, I like them. But uh, the wing cars, I do like. I like 305s better than the 360s, but uh, 410s, I'm not there yet. It's too fast for me. I'm an so, old guy. Well, there's a question. So uh, it was, well, it wasn't last year. It was the year before, I guess. I got you out to the Ash Weekend, and uh, you saw your first dirt race. Uh, tell us what you thought about that. Yeah, well, that's fantastic. I mean, uh, like you said, uh, 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 you don't know what it's like until you see it for real. And, yeah, I was very impressed. Of course, uh, Dylan was running then. And uh, and then, of course, when we went down to, to uh, Merrittville last year with Bill, uh, I still remember that Bill was like he was a kid in the candy shop, but he, he, he we had a ball down there, you know, especially being in the pits and getting to meet some of the guys all, like Glenn was there and uh, Holly Hor- uh, what what's her name? Uh, Porter, Holly Porter. Holly Porter. Yeah. 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 And we, we talked to her for a little bit, you know, just things like that. And we got up close to the fence there and them cars ripping around, throwing the mud at you and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. I've never told you guys, and I got some pictures I want to fire off to you, but my uh, my son-in-law has a race car. He uh, races uh, paved. Uh, it's uh, modified, but there's another name to it, and I keep forgetting it. Uh, so I'm going to fire the... I'm going to put them on the uh, messenger one day there and let you guys see it. I was just over and took some pictures of it. He's raring to go. His son actually drives for, for him now, but uh, uh, he's he's not driving anymore, but they're waiting, of course, for the tracks to open up, and I don't think they'll open up too soon. He he heard, he said the other day that Ontario's not running this year, so well, I don't will tell. They've got, I think they'll start running in July. Uh, maybe, maybe June. Yeah. Maybe June. Like, yeah. you know, this lockdown's over in May going to set everything back but i think we will have a season and i think and and uh the other thing is he runs at flamborough speedway and that's where connor is going to be running so you and i are going to have to make a yeah. track out there and uh see yeah, how connor sure. on the on the track that's connor ross so yeah um, for sure yeah it should uh well, i know good. like my son-in-law's name's dave yeah he knows adam and, and connor very well yeah in fact we were talking about he said connor was going to be running this year yeah so yeah yeah so, that's uh, pretty cool that should be good yeah, you have, so my question is um, your your most memorable uh, memory in iRacing? Uh, likely smashing you into the wall. <laughs> Which you know, time? I, I, I'm running at the back a lot, so I don't have those podium shots and that. Uh, I've had some good heats. I've, I've uh, been first in my heats. Uh, but uh, other than that, I can't think of any one moment that I've had personally yet. I'm waiting for, it, and I know it's going to come someday. But uh, I, I find when I do heats, I do much better. When I get a ton of guys, I haven't got the concept of them being beside me yet and how close I am to people or not close to them. 
Yeah, I, you know, you play the replays and you think you're right at the wall and a car can get by you, you know? Yeah. That's that's my problem right now, so. Yeah, no, you've It's all seat pretty... time, as everybody says, it's seat time, yep. right? Yep. But there, there was a race last week, I forget what whether it was a heat or a... It wasn't a feature, but it was it, or a B main. I think it might have been a B main. There was a, a load of cars out there. You had the pole, and you you ran a no, perfect yeah. race. I was almost half a lap ahead of everybody. I know that happened. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. That was that was pretty impressive. Yeah. What what race was that? That was uh, that was a midday one. It was uh, likely the no we three six. It'd be three sixties on Monday. Yeah, the three sixties. Yeah, on Monday. Yeah, that was. Yeah. Uh, that was at Charlotte. Charlotte's my track. I found I've done very that's well. That's right. It was Charlotte. I remember you saying, yeah, it's my track. Yeah. So that's a very high yeah. bank track. You might find that Bristol suits you well, too. Well, you know what, uh, Preston, saying that, the first day we went in there, remember, Roger, the first time we raced, it was maybe a month ago, and I was flying around there, too. I took the heat. I was away ahead of everybody else. We that's raced there on Monday, and I couldn't do nothing. <laughs> couldn't do nothing. Monday well, or Tuesday we run there. Yeah, it was it yeah. was terrible. So next week should but, be interesting. Yeah. Well, Monday night. Where this is going to be Sunday when yep. everybody sees it. Yeah, so t- it's, tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> it's tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow. Yeah. So, uh, and, and before that happens, uh, we're at Martinsville on Saturday morning. So I think you, yeah. I got to get out on the track and practice. So um, do I. And does that, can, uh, and I'm pretty sure you can load that in AI because that would be a great way to practice yeah. as well. Because I'm going to need that for sure. I don't want. I hate ruining other guys' races. And, um, I do too. So, I, yeah. I'm the same. I just assume to get out and sit. Uh, and I've done that before with 360s. If there's a lot of good drivers in there, I just assume park it because I don't want to cause trouble. <coughs> for anybody. Yeah. No, I hear you, man. Yeah. Any, anyways, buddy, it's been uh, great talking to you, and I'm, I'm glad uh, I'm glad you came out and. Uh, um, Look forward to seeing you on the track many more times. For sure, uh, the retread guys. We got a great room, uh, yeah, and um, have a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, look forward to seeing you on the track. And then, uh, yeah. you know, after you beat my ass, I got to face you on putting the garbage out. And uh, <laughs> you know. yeah, I said that to Mike too today. I said uh, it's about time you retired and get out with us old timers and get into the retreads. Oh yeah, because I wanna. Yeah. Pardon? I was I was agreeing with you. It's time that he retires. Yeah. You know, he's got to be getting close. I think so. I think he's got a couple, yeah, couple of years left. Then. Yeah. Well, if we can oh, if well. we can help push him that way, uh, yeah, he's, yeah, because he'd have a great for time sure. with the retreads for sure. So, for sure. Uh, anyways, G man, it's uh, been great having you on, and uh, appreciate everything that you've done in your career, and uh, appreciate uh, you know racing with you and look forward to getting on the bikes and uh yeah for sure on the trails again i almost thought about it today to pull her down off the rack and get a tires blown up and but i got to say one thing before we leave about the model railroading and and just to let people <laughs> know i was in the model railroading for 20 re- years and uh started my layout here in this house when i moved in i've been here for five years now and uh met roger and he was really keen on it and i'm telling you um, if I could only give you a number of the number of hours he spent doing technical stuff for me, uh, you could understand why he's likely a little pissed off at me for <laughs> shutting her down. But uh, it just happened that I started going in there and coming out. I just couldn't do anything. I just, I don't know what it was. So, And I liked the eye racing, so I shut it down and I... I I took about two weeks before I, I told Roger. I said to my wife, Liz, I says, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but it's got to be. So I always apologize for him, and every time he brings it up, I feel so bad. But uh, <laughs> well, Life goes on, right, Roger? Life goes on, buddy. Not, That's right. Not, not to be understated, night. Gary is a major foundation. If you weren't guys weren't around to the at the beginning of our league, he was the first admin, right? I mean, so that's a big part yeah. of where where we moved to and what we decided to do as far as how we ran races. A lot of it was based on Gary. So, yeah. uh, well, you got big, a you big got part a of the start. League, uh, I'll tell you, you guys, you two, uh, I think have really uh, pushed yourself. Roger has pushed yourself, and uh, I think he, yeah, he pushes me too. 
<laughs> yeah, I think it's uh, work overload sometimes for you two guys. Uh, I and I appreciate everything you do for the league. That's for sure. No oh, thanks, buddy. But you know, like there's no trains to to work with or no scheduling to do for the uh, operations. So now no. it's uh, it's all eye racing. <laughs> it's all eye racing. Yeah, I'm working on selling all the equipment I had. Uh, I'm I've done pretty good. I'm just doing it out of my home so far. But uh, yeah. So the big news of that that front is that he sold enough of the old equipment that he's got enough for your uh, V3 pedals. So that I'm not uh, looking I'm, forward to that at all. <laughs> they're coming soon, I think. Yeah, we just I, you know I'm waiting for this COVID thing because I'd like to order them and go there and pick them up and go with Bill and yourself and maybe John Rayner and do some testing in their facility yeah. there that you said that they got quite a setup. So. Yeah, so I, we mentioned, I can't, I'm trying to remember the name, Sim 1 or Simulation 1, I think it's called. It's in Toronto. And yeah. it is just absolutely spectacular. It's um, They've got probably, uh, I don't know, four or five rigs set up. And I'm talking about rigs. I'm talking about like five to $10,000 rigs set up, you know, like with every, with the best of everything. And uh, you, can, um, you can make it, well, before COVID especially, you, you could... Uh, make an appointment and go in and try the different equipment because I, I, I'm dying to do that just to to get the wheel like Preston's got the wheel but I I want to go with you to try the wheels out and just see how much of a difference that makes so um, yeah. yeah but the Preston had said you don't know of any shops that are like that down in the yeah States? so we don't we don't really have anything like that the the most we have is and there's only a few um, that even sell like sim racing equipment because everything's just Amazon or online now. Um, but there's a store, and some guys will know it real well, called Micro Center. Um, now, there's only there used to be a lot more locations, but they've closed them all down. Um, and so I was in, like, just outside of Philadelphia and ran across one and was actually just looking for a soldering iron for something I was doing for work. And I walked into the side room, and there's just, like, steering wheel, a whole wall of steering wheels and pedals. And I was like, this is this is awesome. Like, there's nothing like that around here. Um you know, you, you can't buy a steering wheel in a store anywhere around here. Not the Logitech ones, nothing. You, you got to order them online. So, yeah, that's... To have uh, somewhere that has... Now, nah, I'm sure there's some in some small and more largely populated areas, but nothing around here, nothing in Richmond or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, no, so that's cool that we got something that over the U.S. guys, because it is a, a kick-ass store. And, and I've told the story before, but the day I went to pick up my pedals... Um, I was picking up a car for uh, the dealer, and it was a uh, 2020 vet. So I pulled in with a vet Rob London. But they were kind of impressed with me, but uh, you know, I think they figured it out pr pretty quick that uh, <laughs> it's nothing to be impressed at, other than the car. So, anyways, but uh, thanks, Gary, uh, for coming on, and uh, I'll see you putting out garbage on Monday. If uh, we have yeah, talked more sure. on iRacing racing than we've seen each other in the last year, like we don't yeah, we that's see right. each other. Maybe once yeah. a month, and then yeah. we live two hours apart. Crazy. Yeah, that's right. It's uh, it's a crazy our lives right now. Yeah. It'll get better, guys. It will. Okay. Better days are coming. Better days are coming. Yep. 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 All okay. Right. And, and Gary and I are going to get down there for that uh, four crowns or something, anyways, and we're going to have a big party. So it should. Be good. We're going to get Gary to shotgun a beer. So that that joke started long, right? Not long after we started the team. So Gary will shotgun a beer, I will film it, and it will be on the podcast. So that's there, there that's go. my promise to you all. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, that's been, it's coming. been fun. We appreciate it, buddy. Okay, take care, guys. Enjoy. Take care.